Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and it's my pleasure to take you through your first look at Photoshop Touch for iPad. That's right, Photoshop Touch on your iPad. So well, what does that mean? Does that mean the full version of Photoshop? Absolutely not. It means a workable version, a version that lets you do the most common tasks that people need to do in Photoshop on a tablet device such as your iPad. Now, if you think about it, well, I have, you know, in my case, I have lots of photo editing apps already, but none of them are actually Photoshop. And that's what gets me jazzed about this particular application is because I approach it the same way I do Photoshop on my desktop. I work with the same tool command, tools and commands. I work with the same layers, techniques. So when I approach editing an image, I don't have to translate what I would do in Photoshop to some other interface or application. I just jump right in and start doing the same things that I would always do. Now, with that said, it's not the full version of Photoshop, just like the iPad is not your full desktop. So there are things that you won't be able to do on Photoshop Touch, just like there won't be, just like there are things that you won't be able to do on your iPad that you could do on your desktop computer. So lots of processing power and RAM and everything else on your computer, not as much on your iPad. So therefore, it scales down um, respectively for your applications as well. But let's take a look at what we can do with this new version of Photoshop for iPad. Let's take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the application here in my Adobe folder. And just like in Photoshop, it's asking me or giving me the choice of how to start. If you look in the lower left hand corner on the left hand side here, I've got create a new document. And on the right hand side, I've got create a new document via a photo. So if you think about Photoshop on your desktop, you're starting with one of those two things. You're either starting with a blank Photoshop document as a designer, perhaps, and you're going to design everything from scratch. Or if you're a photographer, you're probably starting with a photo that you want to retouch. So since I'm a photographer, I'm going to go ahead and start with a photo. So now the next thing it asks me is, where do I want to get my photo from? I have the choice of getting it from any of the albums or folders that are already on the device, just like in Photoshop on your desktop, you'd be able to get photos that are on your hard drive. But I also have some additional choices. For example, I have the ability to log into my account on Creative Cloud. Now the photos we see here are actually stored up in the cloud and I can download them right into the application and begin working with them. I also, since this is a, uh, an iPad with a camera, I have the ability to use the built-in camera as well as the ability to uh, do a Google search or grab photos from Facebook. But since I am already in the cloud here, I'm just going to go ahead and grab one of my images of Coit Tower. We'll just select that image and add it. Now, it downloads the image in this case since it was in the cloud and it wasn't already on the device, and then it lets me begin working on it. Now, this is the interface for Photoshop Touch, and as you can see, it's similar to what you have on the desktop in Photoshop. If you think about it, you'd have all your tools on the left-hand side, but this is kind of a smarter approach where you don't have all the tools showing at all times. You basically have the tool that you have selected, in this case, the marquee tool, and the options for that marquee tool here in the panel. And then, of course, down here at the bottom, I have my undo and redos, as well as on the right hand side I have what I would call my layers panel and of course we have the first layer that we opened up which is the background now what I'd love to do is on this image as you can see there is a moon in the upper right hand corner that was in the actual photo Well, I'm gonna replace that moon with another moon that I shot in a different location different time different time of year the whole nine yards so I want to clone out that moon and of course if I were in regular Photoshop I'd go grab my trusty clone stamp tool and I would pick a source, for example, the sky. And once I had that source selected, I'd go back to the brush, maybe choose a different brush size or um, softness or hardness. And then I would just begin cloning out that particular, let's grab the source spot there, cloning out that particular uh, moon out of the sky. So, just that quickly and easily, doing it the same way I would have done it in Photoshop. Now, I might go in and just maybe grab a different source here. Let's grab the lighter version of the sky, and we'll clone out. That looks a little bit better. 
All right, so you get the idea, same techniques and the same things I'd have to worry about. Again, with the gradation of the sky there, I might take a little bit more time and go in a little bit more detail. But since I'm gonna put something else there, I won't really worry about it. Now, how do I get my next photo? Well, in the lower right-hand corner of the layers panel here, you see your plus sign, which is add a new layer. And I can add an empty layer, duplicate the existing layer, or in my case, I wanna add a photo layer. Then it takes me back to my photo selections to grab my photo from anywhere that I want to grab my photo from. And in this case, there's my moon shot there. We'll just go ahead and grab it. We'll bring it in and we'll move it up in position where we want it to be. We can even move it off the canvas slightly. Now you notice it brought it in kind of in a free transform mode. So I can go ahead and scale it if I need to. I could rotate it. I could flip it. I can do anything I need to do with that shot as if I were in free transform. So Photoshop Touch, in many cases, is gonna be easier because it's taking into account a lot of things that I would have to either use keyboard commands for and uh, other techniques and desktop version of Photoshop that I don't have to do here in Photoshop Touch. For example, as I'm scaling this, I'm not having to hold down the shift key because there is no shift key in this case because I don't have the keyboard. So it's automatically assuming that I want to scale it proportionally. Now, once I'm done, I click done, and uh, that's not gonna sell because we've got the darker sky that I took of the moon on the blue sky in San Francisco. So what would we do? Let's see, we could try and, I know, let's grab the good old eraser tool and let's try and erase that. Well, you could do it that way, but that's probably not a good way to go. <laughs> As you can see, it's not gonna be very clean and it's gonna take you time to try and get it right. So instead, why don't we use a blending mode? So again, thinking Photoshop, I would go into my layer op options, grab a blending mode, perhaps, uh, let's see, multiply makes things darker, screen makes things lighter. I can go ahead and screen the black out of that photo, and voila, like magic, there is my new moon. Now, of course, we don't have to stop there. We can go back to our background layer, for example, or maybe even create a new layer. So let's create a new layer in between. There we go, we've got our new empty layer here, and we can go ahead and grab, for example, the Marquee tool. And what I wanna do is I wanna kinda of create an effect uh, for a title or lower third for this image. So just go ahead and uh, Marquee off that area down there. And now, you know, not all of the features are in the tool panel, and not all of the things are in the layers panel. Some of them are in the menus above. So for example, there's a new ampersand menu and from there, I can add, for example, a gradient. So we'll just add a gradient to this. And I've kind of got a gradient pre-selected here that I like to use, but you know, you can pick whichever one you want. And I'm gonna go back to that kind of that bar or three-dimensional or silver bar that we have there. So we'll just go ahead and click done on that. And I'm not really happy with the opacity of it. It looks too strong for this image. So again, we'll just go to our layer options and we can just lower the opacity of that layer, just like we would in full Photoshop. Kind of get that looking the way I want, and we'll deselect, and there it is. And again, keep in mind that that is on a layer by itself that I can turn on and off. So next, let's go ahead and add some text. So we can add text, just like we would in regular Photoshop. There's our text option. We can go ahead and even pick from a multitude of fonts that are built into the application. I'm gonna use Chaparral Pro. And we can also, of course, edit the text. There we go, bring up our little text editor. And we'll just call this one, let's see, we'll go Coit Tower. And we'll put the keyboard away. There's our Coit Tower, we can move it in place because again, it's automatically selected. We can scale it and get it just to where we want it in the uh, layer. So there we are, multiple layers, including our text, also separated and easily editable from this point on. So last but not least, we can grab one more photo. And this time I'm gonna grab a photo layer. And this one is going to be, uh, my, my buddy made me a new phot photographic stamp for my logo. We'll just grab my logo here. We'll add that in. And of course, that's way too big. So we'll just scale that down, way small. Put it in the corner here. 
And of course, we don't want it with the white background, so we can just use a blending mode. In this case, we'll use multiply, and we'll just remove the white background from it. And there we are. We can even go full screen or remove the interface and kind of look at what we've done thus far. So at this point, well, you know, what makes this different is that it's also cool. I mean, we can go ahead and do things like double click on the layer and we can get into this kind of three dimensional mode to kind of see our layers visually and graphically. And I know that's, you know, kind of one of those things that just has great eye appeal, but you may not necessarily need to do that. It's nice that we can do that in the touch version of Photoshop. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're just going to back out. So we'll hit the upper left arrow, save our project. That way we can always come back to it and work on it more. And we also, of course, have the layers. Let's do one more. So let's go ahead and start a new project. And this time I'm going to grab one of my warehouse shots. I did a shoot in an abandoned warehouse here. We'll pull that one down from, from the cloud as well. And this time we're going to add a photo to this one of a model that I uh, photographed. So we'll just grab another photo layer. I believe I saw the model there. There she is. And we'll go ahead and add this particular layer in. And of course, I shot the model in the studio. And I, photo you know, I photographed the model in the studio, photographed the warehouse in the warehouse. And of course, the two backgrounds don't necessarily match or don't look good together. So what we'll do is we'll say done for now. And what I need to do, of course, is remove that background. Now, this is a task for Photoshop. This is not something, you know, we'd easily do here in most of these uh, uh, touch applications. But this is Photoshop on the iPad. So let's take a look at what we can do. First thing we'll do is look at our selection tools. They're kind of basic, kind of primitive. But wait a minute. Next to that lasso is a new tool. It's the Scribble Selection Tool. So let's go ahead and kind of, there are two modes for it. There's Keep and Remove. And we'll go ahead and stay on Keep for now. And now we just kind of tell Photoshop the areas of the photo, kind of maybe roughly outline what we want to keep. Okay, we'll go up the arm here and the hand. And we'll say, you know what, that's the area I want to keep in the photo. Now, the next thing we do is we go to remove and we tell it the opposite. You know, we don't really want any of this background here. So we'll just kind of tell it, hey, we, this background we don't need. And let's get rid of that. And it will make a new selection based on that. Now, the selection itself is, again, kind of rough. It's not going to be a, a perfect or great selection. Uh, so we can kind of refine it a little bit and go in some more and say, you know what, I kind of want to remove some of that. And I can go back to, you know, wait, let's remove some more of this edge here. There we go, where it kind of went a little too far out. And I can also go back to keep and say that I want to keep some more of that arm that was being cut off there. But you know what, no matter how much I go back and forth on this, this particular image with keeping and removing, it's still going to be a hard edge selection. And as you may have noticed, she has hair. So we want that hair to look good against the new background. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into something that we would expect to find only in Photoshop, and that is our menu here, Refine Edge. The, that's right, the Refine Edge that was introduced in Photoshop CS5 has made its way into the touch application. So now I just simply tell it, hey, you know what? I don't want this gray. Can you kind of remove that for me? And it does a better job of masking the gray. So we can go up and around the arm here as well and kind of just refine that edge and do a better job. So actually I'm going to undo that last one. I kind of don't like the way that one worked. There we go. That's a little better. And again, uh, we can also change our brush size. Let's make our brush size a little smaller here. There we go. And we'll come back out. We'll try that edge one more time so I can kind of get it the way I want. That's better. Okay, and same thing around the hair. One more quick pass throughout the hair to get rid of the gray and refine that down. So now when we say okay, that becomes our new selection 
And more importantly, now we can go up and we can say, from the Select menu, we can actually, from the Pencil menu, we can say Extract. And that will extract the background, leaving us our model on her own layer. So we can go ahead and say Deselect, and we can then grab the Move tool, and we can move her and position her wherever we want. Now, of course, um, if this were in real life, uh, we would probably be casting a shadow on that water or down on the ground since she's jumped up. So let's go ahead and click OK or Done on that. And let's go in and duplicate this layer. There we go. And on the duplicate, we're going to go into our transform again, and we're going to flip it vertically. And then we're going to say done. We're just going to move it down. And <laughs> wrong select, wrong tool there. Let's undo that. And we're just going to go into our move tool, and we're just going to move it down. Put it kind of in the water there. And then, of course, if this were re regular Photoshop, the next thing I'd do is go in and lower the opacity. Just kind of make that more of a reflection onto the ground or onto the water. Now, only thing I don't like about it is I don't like the knee kind of sticking out there. You know, we wouldn't really be able to see it that well. So I could do you know, a gradient mask or some kind of gradient on it, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. So let's go ahead and grab the eraser tool, and we'll just go ahead and erase that one little part off that layer. And there we are. There's our completed composite. Now, of course, I'm not crazy about the edges here that, you know, if we go back to that layer, I could zoom in maybe and go around the edge a little bit more on the background there and kind of remove some of that. But I'm just not crazy about um, how I did on that selection. Although it's looking pretty good now <laughs> that I've gone in and just touched it a little bit. But one of the things I would do in regular Photoshop is I would go in and maybe um, touch it up a little bit more. And that's exactly what we can do. So, for example, I can say save this project and... Because this is a layered Photoshop touch file, I can just simply go to Creative Cloud, upload that to the Creative Cloud, and then on my desktop, I could go to Creative Cloud uh, on the web and download that photo. And once I sign into Creative Cloud on my desktop, as you can see, I have the uh, untitled PSDX file here, which is the Photoshop touch format. I could select it. I can take a further look at it. I can even see uh, the color swatches uh, that Muse has, or I'm sorry, that um, Cooler has created for it. I can, of course, download this file. And once I download it, I can just simply head over to Photoshop, open it up, and guess what? I've got all my layers, everything that I've done. So I started my project in Photoshop Touch, and I can continue working on it with the full power of Photoshop on my desktop. So again, these are the things that no other editing app are, is going to give me on any other tablet because I have the full working workflow or the full workflow of Photoshop from start to finish. Either I start it in Photoshop, work on a tablet, start it on a tablet, work on it in Photoshop, back and forth, and again, all wirelessly via the Creative Cloud. So Photoshop Touch for iPad is available today. Go ahead and grab your copy. You can grab it from the App Store, and of course, if you're an Android user, you can, already, you can also grab it from the uh, Android market. So with that, thanks again for watching this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite Podcast. My name is Terry White.